The first essential amino acids we're going to look at the biosynthesis of are the aromatic amino acids. And this is going to be dispersed over several videos. All right. Now, again, essential amino acids are not amino acids that we as humans make. These are instead going to have to be made in plants or bacteria, so on and so forth. And it turns out that out of these four aromatics, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and histidine, only histidine does not use the same precursor. In general, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan are all going to come from the same precursor, and that precursor is known as charismate. Okay? So we're first going to look at the synthesis of charismate, and then we'll look at individually the synthesis of these three right here. After that, we'll look at the synthesis of histidine. All right, charismate. Charismate is going to be synthesized through two molecules that are just everyday things floating around the cell. Remember, we have this concept in biosynthesis that we're going to take things from here and there, siphon things out of pathways, and use them to make interesting and useful molecules. Turns out that to ultimately make charismate, we're going to use phosphoenolpyruvate, which is from glycolysis, a very high energy molecule, and erythrose 4-phosphate, which is from the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, this is a, you know, kind of a, a long, complicated pathway. I'm not going to really go into uh, the, the details so much. I think that's getting into a little too much of the weeds here. Um, but ultimately, I want to just point out some, some important things, okay? We are taking things from everyday pathways. Again, I'll repeat it. Phosphoenolpyruvate is from glycolysis. And one important thing about PEP, it is one of the highest energy phosphates that we have in the cell. Very high energy. So we're starting up really high in energy in this pathway, and then we're going to condense it with erythrose 4-phosphate. That also has a phosphate, and it's activated to some extent. But erythrose 4-phosphate is from the pentose phosphate pathway, particularly the non-oxidative version of the pathway. And ultimately, through a series of transformations, we're going to get charismate. Now, again, notice several things. This is not the only phosphoenolpyruvate that we use. In step six over here, we have to use another phosphoenolpyruvate, which basically tells you that to make this ring from basically nothing, remember, this is the ring we're using to make phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, we gotta use a lot of energy. You also see in this step right here, we use up an ATP. And then in this step, we use up an NADPH. So it turns out just to make the precursor ring, charismate, it's going to require a lot of energy to do this. Okay? Um, so charismate is going to require a lot of energy. Two phosphoenolpyruvates, erythrose 4-phosphate, an ATP, and an NADPH. And ultimately, what we're going to get at the very end is charismate. Okay? So I just wanted to point that out. The charismate that we generate here is going to ultimately go in, into phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan synthesis, but not histidine synthesis. Histidine is going to be made in a completely different manner. Okay? Now we're going to go into tyrosine and phenylalanine biosynthesis, which uh, is going to go with charismate synthesis, and then in the next video we'll go over tryptophan. So for tyrosine and phenylalanine, notice we start up here with charismate. Now, I will go into this pathway in a little more detail. Charismate is going to react with an enzyme called prephenate synthase. Um, that's going to give us this molecule called prephenate. Now, prephenate can go in one of two pathways. On the left, it goes towards tyrosine. On the right, towards phenylalanine. Going to the left here for tyrosine synthesis, prephenate is going to react with prephenate dehydrogenase which is going to completely aromatize the ring, giving us 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvate, which will then be transaminated to make tyrosine. If we go to the right here, prephenate will react with prephenate dehydratase, um, which doesn't give us an NADH, but it gives us phenylpyruvate, which will also be transaminated, but this time to make phenylalanine. Now, one important thing I want to, to mention again, and I brought it up initially when we talked about essential versus non-essential amino acids, I said that tyrosine, if you look at pretty much every list, you can Google this, whatever, uh, you'll see that tyrosine is listed as a non-essential amino acid. And I want to ask you, based on what we've seen in this pathway right here and then the previous one, why does that not make sense that it's non-essential? Well, it has to be essential because in order for something to technically be non-essential, the organism has to be able to make it de novo. 
We cannot make tyrosine in amounts, in any amount, de novo, to support life. We can't do it because the synthesis of it comes from charismate, which is not made in humans. Um, in general, charismate is in bacteria and plants and then a select few other organisms, but it's not in mammals, certainly not in humans. So if we can't make charismate, we can't make tyrosine or phenylalanine. Now, there is one reaction in humans, I will say, that converts already ingested phenylalanine to tyrosine. It's called phenylalanine hydroxylase. In my mind, that alone does not justify tyrosine being non-essential, okay? Because if we don't have phenylalanine in the diet, then we don't have any tyrosine, right? Because you, it, you have to make tyrosine from phenylalanine. If you're not getting either one of those, you've got no tyrosine. So in my mind, it is nonsense that tyrosine is non-essential. It has to be essential, okay? So the point is tyrosine, phenylalanine, and as we'll see in the next video, tryptophan cannot be made de novo in humans. They are essential amino acids. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe for future videos and notifications.